The lady from My Hermes has just been and she's dropped off my latest purchase. So let's have a look at it. <laughs> Now this is quite an interesting cleaner. I know what it is, obviously, because I, I bought it. I know, what? Oh God. Anyway, um, I'm sobering up. I think that's the problem. I've never seen one of these, and I think it is a, uh, how can I put it? Um, an Eastern European vacuum cleaner, possibly from Zelma, I think. But we'll know more when we get into it and we can see its ratings plate. Now, how has this been done? Uh, an awful lot of tape. Awful, awful lot of tape. Um, I really like these sort of um, Eastern U European machines, like the certainly the ex-Soviet ones. Um, they're, they're so cool. I love them. And obviously, getting cleaners that um, we didn't get in the UK is really special. I love it, I love it so much, it's so cool. What have we got here? Um, okay, that's just a address label, we'll get rid of that. Um, right, so we're in, and the first thing is, uh, we've got this multi-tool here for an Electrolux contour. So Ryan, thank you for that, that's fantastic, because my contour didn't come with it, and now I have one, so that's brilliant. Thank you so much. And of course, we're now into the guts of the box. So again, I'm gonna put it down here and I'm just gonna open it up and then show you what comes out of the box. So there's only the hose with this cleaner, sadly, but um, that's all right. I'm sure we can find some other stuff to use with it. And I think it's probably a 35 mil hose. Here's the hose, I mean, it's, just, it's really basic. Uh, you can tell it's not like the usual UK kind of quality. That Western Europe has much better quality machines than Eastern Europe used to have, and you can tell that by this is, this is that. That's not that's not great. And there's no swivel on the hose here. It kind of looks like well, it looks a bit Panasonic-y. It's obviously not, but it's kind of what they gone for there. Um, sadly the uh, suction regulator is missing, there's a hole here where there should be a cover over, over that, but that's fine, we can stick some black tape over that, it won't make a huge difference. There's a moulding number there, I don't know what that is, but this, you see, you see the, the machine end here, so it's a swivel and it rotates on that point as well, which is good. And this, this massive ring here, which you hold to pull the hose out of the cleaner. Now that to me screams Blomberg because um, I remember seeing Blomberg cleaners with this sort of ring on it which you used to, to pull out. Um, so Blomberg was a label of Zelma. Now if I'm getting this wrong please tell me in the comments because you guys were, were fantastic. In the past when I've done videos on say Rotel machines um, you've come forward with some really great info, some really useful stuff, it's really helped me to learn. But this is very much of that kind of stable of machines. It's just, it's, it, it's kind of, yeah, it's saying Polish to me. That's, that's what this is saying, Polish. But uh, we don't know yet because I haven't seen many pictures of, of this cleaner. So let me get it out. It's very well wrapped again. Look at that. God, it's it's encased, absolutely encased. Nicely done, Mark. Lovely, lovely bit of packaging. It's great. <laughs> oh, goodness. okay. Bear with me. Oh wow. Oh God, I can see the front of the thing. This is so cool. Oh my God. It's like a real fat boy. It just, it's, it just looks like really fat. Oh, wow. There's so much bubble wrap. Oh. Come on. It's in here somewhere. Ah. Oh. Okay, right. Oh, God, wow. 
Well, there's the back of the cleaner. That is a massive amount of bubble wrap. <laughs> Which is always useful for when I'm selling stuff. So, what we've got here is... Hang on, I'm just going to pull the cable out a little bit. Oh wow, this is so cool. This is so cool. Look at that. A Kelner 1400. I've never... I've never seen anything like this. This is, this is amazing. Oh my God, this is amazing. Wow, there's so much to talk about. There's just like so much here that's kind of jumping out at me. But the first thing I want to do is look at the ratings plate. Okay, oh. Well, would you look at that? It's Spanish. It's Spanish. How strange. So here on the on the racing plate here. Oh god, it's gonna fall out. Ooh, careful. Okay. So I'll oh hang on, hang on, hang on. There's another. Oh that's interesting. Okay. So this is this this is really odd. There's two stickers on the machine's bottom. So one of them is in Spanish. Okay, so it says algunos componentes son in Portados to, oh, what does that say? Labels a little bit. Terminado, envasado y distribuido por CEKSA, Luis Lamarca, 18, Valencia, España, NIF A46 707 626. And then under that, there's a little tiny silver sticker that says LO. 0924. I wonder if that's the serial number. But interestingly, embossed into the plastic, and it's really hard to see. I'm going to have to. Uh, I have to turn it over like that. I need some more light. Yeah, just here it says. Yeah, it's embossed. Kellner, Aspirador, Mecanico, mm, Aspirador Mecanico, Modelo 1400. 220 volts, 50 hertz, 1100 watts. So that's interesting. So, yeah. Well, the fact that it's got as Aspirado Mechanico on it would suggest to me that actually it is Spanish. It is a Spanish machine. Maybe this is like, um, oh, let me try and think. You know how Goblin used to make uh, machines for other companies? And Goblin was like Britain's core, uh, not core, but uh, you know, it's a um, homegrown company. I wonder if the company who made this were like Spain's home homegrown company, they're equivalent to Goblin, and they've made this cleaner under a Kellner bland, bland? Brand, a Kellner brand. Um, I just kind of, I kind of like, I'm kind of thinking that maybe it's a catalogue machine, you know? It was made for a Spanish catalogue? Could be. I mean, I don't know. If, if you guys know, then please tell me. It's so fat! That's what sort of jumps out at me. God, that's a, that is a strong rewind. Wow, okay. That's, um, yeah. Oof. And we've got something here. We've got like a blanking plate. <coughs> Excuse me, here. I wonder what that was for. Let me show you. I need to pull this plug out. I'm, I'm sort of... I, I don't know what to say because I'm really excited. <laughs> okay, I've got this little blanking black plug here, which is really odd. Um, I wonder... I was going to say if that was maybe a bag full indicator, but that looks like it's probably a bag full indicator, like the piston style one there. Um, so we've got the power on and off there. We've got the flex rewind, which is really powerful. We've got this funny moulding here. I don't know what that's all about. That's really weird. Look at that. It's like, um, hmm. Something must have been put here on different models. I wonder if it was like a suction regulator, sort of electronic power control. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm just making this all up. I've never, ever seen one of these ever in my life. It's, it's, it's amazing. Um, so obviously we can open this. There's like a, what's going on here? Let's open this up. Oh, God, okay. 
Oh, right, so that lifts away. My God, the plastic is so thick. I, I, I know you can't see it on the camera, but it's like really thick plastic. What's that written there? Someone's written, it looks like in Biro, 2B6. That's weird. <sighs> Bit dusty. It's got flathead screws as well. I mean, look, I mean, you, might, you might be able to see them. But there's flathead screws, which is really strange. That's quite unusual to see that. Normally they're like a Phillips star, but this is, yeah, it's flathead screws on it. Weird. That's so weird. Does that come off? Oh, I think this comes off too. Hang on. Does that come off? It kind of looks like it does, because there's like a... Well, maybe not. That's, that's odd. That can't, no, hang on. I put that there like that. If you see that little bit there, it looks like there's a tab there. Um, and the tab kind of looks like you're meant to pull it out and then take this panel off. Because it's not really connected to anything. I wonder if it's screwed in underneath. Let me have a look. Oh shit, I mean, oh goodness. <laughs> That'll be the dust bag falling out. It's got a cloth bag. Hang on a minute, I'll come back to that. Um, so there's a cloth bag there, and then inside it, I think we have, oh yeah, look, we've got a, we've got a paper bag inside the cloth bag. Oh, look at that. I've never seen, never seen one like that. It's massive. The cardboard is huge. It's a huge, grippy piece of cardboard. Wow. So that sits like that, and I guess it just like seals against it. Not, not very well, by the looks of things. And then you kind of lock it down like so, so that gets locked in. So you've got your paper bag inside. Right, let me let me try that again, but without throwing things everywhere. Um, no, it's weird. It, it kind of half feels like it wants to come off. This panel sort of wants to come off, but it doesn't want to come off. <sighs> no, I'm not going to break it. How very strange. Okay, I yeah. No idea, no idea. And I, isn't it odd that they've said it's a Kelner 1400? So they, they, they put 1400 here, like pr pride of place, 1400. So you'd think, oh, 1400 watts. Uh, but it's not 1400 watts, it's 1100 watts, as we found out by looking underneath. Let's put this bag in properly. Which way does it go? Um, I think it goes like that. No, maybe not. Does it go that way? No, that doesn't want to go in. Should you put it in that way? No, surely not. Oh! Oh no, you do! You put it in, you sort of put it in upside down. That's weird. How strange. Um, I'm looking here now to see if there's like a, a pre-motor filter, but there's not. There's just a plastic moulding here. There's like a bulkhead, which kind of reminds me of a Hoover Compact, actually. That's very, very much the style of a compact bulkhead. But I wonder if it's one piece of plastic. I mean, we won't know until we get into it, but to be honest with you, I don't even know how you, how you get into it because there's no, there's no like obvious screws. See, the more I think about it, the more I'm convinced this panel comes off, but I don't want to break it. I want to like do that in the workshop when I've got some light on it and I can like, look at it properly. I suspect this clips down the side because there's absolutely no screws. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? I can't see any screw holes. I'll look behind the wheels here. There's no screw holes. No, there's nothing. There's nothing. I can't see a single screw on this entire machine. Oh, I can see some up here to hold this piece on. Um, I think I can see some posts. I think these are probably screw posts here that are inside the cleaner to hold the motor unit in place. But I, there's nothing down here that shows any screws at all. So I'm guessing you have to go in this way. Yeah, the more I think about it, the more convinced I am that you actually take this panel off. But how you do it, I don't know. And I'm not gonna do it here because I don't wanna break it. So let's put this massive chunky piece of plastic back on. Isn't that funny how it does that? How it goes on that way? And then you just like push it down. And you, it's got like these, indentations on either side where you can like lift that panel off this, this is a it's a fascinating cleaner this is really interesting just let me 
I'm going to plug it in and then we can turn it on and then we can hear what it sounds like. So let me just pop this in. Is it on? Okay, well it sounds... Mm, I'm not sure. I'm smelling the exhaust because there's just... Yeah, there's a distinct tick there. I have a horrible feeling that, that the motor might be partially burnt out because there's a, a slight ozone smell and there's a real tick. You can hear the brushes ticking on the commutator when the motor runs down. Yeah, unfortunately, I think we've got a partially burnt out motor there. That's a real shame. Ah, oh, damn. Okay. I'm really not doing very well recently, am I? I'm getting really rubbish things in the post. I'm not, I'm not overly worried um, because I can put a new motor in this cleaner once I work out how to take it apart. It's a shame because I really wanted to do a, a video of it in use. I dug down some... 35 mil hoses, um, uh, rods and um, floor seal for it to use. But uh, yeah, sadly, I don't think we're gonna be doing that today, which is a pity. Um, you can, actually, you can see the bag full working. <laughs> That's a really violent bag full there. Like a click, click. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely a problem there. I'm gonna have to try and get into this. Um, I think what I might do now is is pause here, take the cleaner up to, to the workshop, have a look, see if I can actually get inside it. And if I can, I will continue the video in the workshop. As I suspected, this panel does indeed pop off. It just comes off like so. And there's a couple of little catches here um, down the end. Of them because on e either side so you can take this off and actually when you do take that off it reveals the blower port which is right here so it should be relatively easy to get into actually there's only four screws that hold it down so I'm just going to undo these screws we've got one two three four and then we'll get into the motor Right, that's our four screws out. It's surprisingly um, tricky to do those because they're flathead screws and they're a pain in the bum. Okay, here we go. So now we can have a look inside. I'd say it would be great if we could find um, some kind of date code for it to actually see when it was built. It kind of looks like a late 80s machine. Um, this is interesting. Look, this is that, uh, that moulding that goes in here. And it's like it's on a separate piece of plastic. It's no bizarre look, and it sort of pokes up, pokes up through there. What was that? I wonder. What was on there? Oh, and it's like it's shaped too. Look, so it only goes one way. Huh? Isn't that funny? Oops. Dropsy. What a strange idea. Okay. Um, it's like on this piece of plastic here. This mounted piece of plastic. See all this here. All this. See, the way the switch is positioned and the screws used, it, it is very Eastern Europe. And the fact that it says it's Spanish, it's just, I, I'm not convinced it is Spanish. I don't, I don't think it was made in Spain. 
Mm, that lots of carbon dust. Not a good sign. Not a good sign. Um, okay, we've got a suppressor here. Let's pull this piece of foam out of the way. Our suppressor is knackered. That has gone bang. Look. And see how it's split and it's all wet. All the um, electrolytics are, are leaking out from it. So that's not good. That needs to go. I think we have to undo this nut here to release this, this switch assembly. Isn't that funny? What an odd way of doing it. So let's undo that. Let's get that out of the way. Pop that down there. So this should now out. Yep, there we go. Okay. Right, we're getting further along. Oh, wow. This is all really odd. Yeah, this is not how you would do it in in the UK. Can I pull this up? Oh, yeah, there we go. So that pulls up. And then you can kind of just about pull the motor out. Oh, it's so odd. Look at it. It's like encased. It's, it's encased, but not encased, if you know what I mean. It's like really odd look at that you don't you test it <laughs> you don't see that very often do you let's have a look at the commutator here oh that's gonna scrape isn't it yeah that's not looking brilliant although having said that oh well, maybe that segment there possibly that one yeah i think what i might do is just check the carbon brushes um, mm. oh, look at this. Look how weird that is. Hang on, there's a sticker here. Let's have a look at this sticker. Type 1.983. Number oh, half, half missing. Oh, it's so strange, isn't it? So in order to get the motor apart, you need to take off the fans, which will reveal the screws, which are here. Then you've got this funny thing. It's like a little rivet with an earth point for the suppressor. God, that's gone really bad. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, I think this is sort of one to do off camera, actually, because this is going to take some faffing about. And I'm going to see if I can save this motor. I don't think I'll be able to, but I'll give it a try. Um... And yeah, I'll give you an update in a following video. Oh, look at that. That's all leaks from that suppressor. Ugh. Oh, it's vile. Okay, yeah. Right, I'm going to leave it there. Um, thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that overview. We will definitely come back to this cleaner in the, the future when I've worked out what I'm going to do with it, how I'm going to change this really strange motor or whatever. I'm not in entirely sure but uh, yeah thanks for watching don't forget to do the um, the commenting the subscribing and the liking it really helps me out and um, i'll see you in a f future video take care guys bye